All right, this is going to be a demo of how to do the kinetics analysis for the lab that we just finished. What I have set up here is a Google Sheets file that already has my time in seconds in the first column. And I've tried to highlight um, with some colors here, trial one and trial two's data. You'll notice that the first column for each of these shows the absorbance values and that the second column shows where we're going to be calculating the concentrations. Now remember, our initial concentration at time zero uh, is not trustworthy for a couple reasons, right? We didn't have the cuvette in the spectrophotometer, so whatever reading you got at time zero, you want to delete that and not include it as part of your analysis. Also, while we could put in the initial concentration uh, using the M1V1 equals M2V2 equation that would that would usually work for us to calculate what that initial concentration should be uh, based off of the way we diluted the stock solution to create our original reaction mixture. Remember that the concentration on the stock bottle in the lab was not actually accurate and so we're just going to basically ignore the first data point at time zero here. So um, the zero seconds value, we're going to end up not including this. I've left it in here for now just to make a point of that, uh, but you can literally just delete that row of data uh, and not include it for, for most of you. Now off to the side here, I've also made a point of the fact that our slope of our uh, graph we made in lab six, which is our calibration curve, that that slope gives us the extinction coefficient for Beer's law. And so um, the value you get from that graph is what you want to put over here as like a reference. And I'm going to be using this value to calculate the concentrations that we have at each time based off of what the absorbance is that we're measuring at each time. So remember, this equation for Beer's Law says that the absorbance is related to the concentration basically through this extinction coefficient or absorption coefficient, um, which again is the slope from the graph we made from lab six. So um, this value you should have got somewhere between like 50,000 and 80 or 90,000, something like that should hopefully be what you're getting if you are creating that graph correctly. Um, please reach out to me if you're having trouble with the calibration curve. Uh, I have a couple tips I can offer on how to make sure that that's working properly. Okay, so let's proceed with what we want to do here. Um, so we are first going to program these cells to calculate the concentration for us from the absorbance value and from this extinction coefficient. Now, I'm pretty sure the analysis instructions that were provided in the lab manual had a typo in them um, because I had a few people reach out about this now saying that they didn't think that the calculation of concentration was being done correctly. Um, we should note here that if we're trying to calculate C in this equation right here, that if we have the absorbance and we know what the extinction coefficient is, that it's going to be the absorbance divided by the extinction coefficient that's going to allow us to solve for concentration. So I want to take this absorbance value that I have right here in this first row with a value, and I want to divide that by this extinction coefficient. Okay. Now, if I type that in as equals B4 divided by this G3 is where I have this other value, and I hit enter, that's going to calculate the concentration for me. And I'm realizing um, right now that the value is so small that it's just showing up as a zero. Um, if you do not have your values pre-formatted, this won't be a problem, but I'm just going to change the formatting here um, in case you want to know how to do this. Uh, if you're having trouble displaying numbers correctly, you go to the format menu, you come down here to number, and then I can choose scientific notation here. And so you'll notice that that value was not actually zero, it was just a really, really small number. Um, and we can see that value now clearly here. Notice that in uh, the spreadsheet programs, when you're doing scientific notation, you do want to use the calculator format. So always type in numbers as uh, the value E will stand in for the times 10 to the, and then you type whatever the value it's uh, being taken to off to the side there. All right, so that equation, we can still see it up here. Um, might be a little hard to see that on the video, but um, that equation is being used. I want to copy that equation down through the rest of these values. So if I drag this lower right corner for that cell all the way down, 
that's going to carry the equation down through. And what you'll notice is it didn't actually work, right? I'm getting this error. Now, why am I getting an error? Well, the error is coming from the fact that when you copy the equation down, your values that you use in the equation are going to update based off the new row that that equation is located in. So when I grabbed the cell on the left here, it's basically saying, well, if this equation is now in the next row down, I still want to grab the cell that's right next to the, the place where I have the equation. Um, and that's fine. We do want it to do that. So we want this to change to B5. We want the next row for it to change to C5. Uh, or sorry, sorry, uh, B, B6, right? It's gonna go to this one. We want it to then change to B7, B8, like we want that to change. But what we don't want to change is the value that it's grabbing over here on the right. You'll notice that the box it's trying to take the absorption coefficient from is actually the box below where the value is located. So how do I fix this? Well, I'm gonna go back to my original equation that we typed in. And in order to tell the spreadsheet to always grab the same cell for this second value, I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of both the letter and the number. Okay. And so if I do it that way and hit enter, um, I'm going to now copy this down the column again for all these rows. So drag down through. And now you'll notice this worked. And if I click on it, notice that I'm taking the absorbance divided by this absorption coefficient for that first cell. And then if I go to the next cell, again, it's grabbing the next absorbance value down, the next row down, but it's still grabbing that same extinction coefficient, right? So if I go down, even all the way down here, notice it's grabbing the absorbance right next to the cell that I'm doing the calculation in, but then it's also still grabbing the correct absorption coefficient. Okay, I want to do this same programmed calculation for trial two. So I can actually just copy this cell over and that'll bring, oops, let me copy it. Let me paste it as just the formula. So edit, paste special, formula only. Um, and you'll notice that again, if I copied and pasted this because of those dollar signs, it kept this cell correctly um, assigned, but it updated the, the absorbance value to the one that's adjacent to the cell where this equation is located. So that will also work when you copy and paste sort of to a new position, as long as you have your spreadsheet set up similarly. Now this column again has the wrong format on the numbers, so let me fix that. And all right, now I want to copy this equation down through the whole way. Okay, so this is how you can very quickly do all of these concentration calculations without having to sit down and do all 60 of them by hand, right? So use Excel whenever possible to do your calculations for you. All right, now that we have all of the concentrations calculated, it's time to start um, working on the graph. So I'm going to make a new uh, data table for this, or a new sheet, I should say. I'm going to label this first sheet um, the raw data. And then on this next sheet, I'm going to na name this trial one. And for the trial one data, I'm going to literally come here and just copy out these values that I have. So the time and the absorbance and concentration values. And I'm going to do another one of these paste specials here and just paste the values only. Okay, so. I don't get the fancy colors this time, but that's okay. You don't need that. Um, and you'll also notice that I lost my formatting on my numbers, but that's okay too. We don't, this doesn't need to look pretty or anything. What I'm gonna do now is calculate the Y values that I'm gonna need for two of the three graphs that we need to make. So if you remember, one of the graphs is gonna be concentration versus time. And so we already have that here. We have our concentration values and we have our time. But the other two graphs are going to require natural log of the concentration and then one over the concentration as the y values. Now remember, I don't want these values at time zero, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this row. And then I'm going to go about formatting this again to calculate these values for me for so I don't have to do them all by hand. So for the natural log cell, I'm going to type equals ln, it's going to notice that that is a mathematical function, so you can click on it if you want to. But then in parentheses there, I'm going to choose the concentration value because I want to take the natural log of the concentration. I'm going to end that with a parentheses. And 
Google Sheets is actually really good about kind of trying to predict what you're trying to do. So you'll notice if you're doing, if you're following along with me here, it's probably going to ask you, do you want to autofill that same equation the rest of the way down the column? And I'm going to say, yes, I want to do that. And because I'm only uh, referring to the cell that's right next to the calculation, I don't have to do any fancy programming with the dollar signs this time because I do want that cell, C3, to change as we go down through the row. So like on the next one, it now says C4 because it's in the fourth row. On the next one, it says C5 because it's in the fifth row. All right, so then for the one over concentration column, same thing, we're gonna do equals one divided by, and then I want, again, I wanna grab the concentration cell. So that's still gonna be C3. And then I'm gonna hit enter. And again, Google Sheets is gonna say, hey, do you wanna do this to the whole column? And I'm gonna say, yes, I want that same equation. And I can double check here that it's doing one divided by the concentration. And then if I go down to the next cell, one divided by the concentration from that cell. Okay, so this gets all of our data ready to go for the graphs for trial one. And so um, let me go ahead and move this time label down and I'm gonna get rid of this row because I don't need it. And I'm gonna click the time column and then I'm gonna hold the control button and I'm uh, on my keyboard and I'm gonna click the C column. And that's gonna select the two columns that I want to use for the first graph. So then I'm gonna go here, insert chart. And we're gonna see if it actually grabs the correct values. Sometimes this doesn't work right off the bat. If you notice over here in the chart editor, it says the series it's plotting are time and concentration. Series is your Y values. So really we only want the concentration to be plotted here. So I'm gonna remove the time from the series. And then very important, you wanna make sure you go to the X axis and select that time so that you're making sure you're getting labels down here at the bottom. Now, the other thing to change here is we want this to be a scatter plot. So I wanna change the chart type under setup to scatter, okay? And then I wanna go ahead and make some of my adjustments here to the formatting. So this is going to be the, um, let's say we could call this the zeroth order kinetics graph. Um, so this is the case where M is gonna be equal to zero. And I'll go ahead and center that. Um, I want to add some axes titles. So my horizontal axis is my time in seconds. And my vertical axis is my concentration in molarity. I'm also gonna make the font size a little bigger here because I think that's a little too small. So let's change those font, oops, I had this at 20, yeah. Change those font sizes. I also like to make the labels on the, the tick marks just one font size, or maybe I'll make them two font sizes down from what the label is. Uh, yep, that looks good. And then the last thing is we want to add a trend line to this graph. So if I double click on the graph again and go to customize and go to series, under series here in the customize tab, I'm gonna hit trend line and then make sure that you also choose to show the R squared value and that you change the label to use equation, right? Because we wanna show the equation for this trend line as well as the R squared value since that's gonna be really important for how we evaluate these graphs. Okay, so once you've got one of these graphs set up, let me show you the next sh little shortcut trick, which is that if I just copy this graph, so copy chart, and then I paste it, right? All of my formatting will stay the same, and then I can double click on the chart, I can come here into setup, and I can change the series to the different Y values that I wanna have for this graph. Now, for the next second graph, I want the Y values to be the natural log, so that's the D column. So if I just change these C's that I have here to D's and then hit OK, now this gives me the natural log graph. Now, for the natural log graph, it's gonna to try to make it at zero, zero. Um, always change that. So if I go to, let's see, vertical axis, I can set my mac or my yeah my maximum value here to like negative 11, and that will make it so the data fills the whole graph. 
Notice that the trend line's still there, the equation's still there, the R squared value's still there. All I need to do now is change this to say 